So in this video, we're going to look at two topics. We're going to look at midpoint and distance. So to start off, we're going to look at the midpoint. And just remember that the midpoint of a segment is the point in the middle. So a midpoint divides a segment into two equal parts. So here's our midpoint. And when we're looking at midpoint, we're really going to be looking at it on a coordinate plane, so on a graph. And the first thing you should know is the midpoint formula. So the midpoint formula, you're trying to find the point in the middle of two given coordinates. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to always take the average of the x values, so add up the two numbers, divide it by 2, and then add up the two y values and divide by 2. So you could also write this if you want as the average um, of x and then the average of y. So let's look at this example here. So we want to find the midpoint of this segment, and we have coordinates A and B. So I'm going to go ahead and start by showing you with the formula algebraically. So I'm going to call each coordinate x1, y1, x2, y2. Remember the names of these don't matter. You can switch them, call whatever ones you want, x1, y1, um, and the other ones x2, y2. And then you plug in. So I'm going to take the two x's. I'm going to plug in. So 0 plus negative 2 all over 2. And then I have y1 and y2 all over 2. And then you're going to go ahead, so combine the top. 0 plus negative 2 gives me negative 2. 2 plus 4 gives me 6. And then you're actually just going to divide these. So negative 2 divided by 2 gives me negative 1. And 6 divided by 2 gives me 3. So there's my midpoint, negative 1, 3. Now, on a graph, how you would do this is you would start by plotting the points. So we have 0, 2. Make sure you label. And then B is negative 2, 4. And again, labeling my points. And if you want to find the midpoint, what that means is you have to find the point in the middle of these two points. So you have to figure out, well, how did I go from one to the other? So to go from B to A, I had to go down 2, and then I had to go right 2. So that means to get to the midpoint, I have to go down 1 over 1, and that's going to get me my midpoint. So my midpoint is going to be right here. So if you look, the midpoint's at the coordinates negative 1, comma 3. So again, you have to know algebraically, you have to know the formula, because what if these original points were decimals or fractions? It wouldn't come out nicely, but this is, graphically is a good way to just check if you can. So then let's look at one other type of midpoint problem. And this is whenever they give you an endpoint and you're trying to figure out um, the other endpoint with given the midpoint and one of the endpoints. So what that means is if you had this picture where I have, here's my segment AB and M is the midpoint, basically what they would do is they would give me A and M and I would have to find B or they would give me B and M, and I would have to find A. So let's do this one on a graph first so that it's visually uh, makes sense. So if I start with the coordinates of A are negative 2, 6, so negative 2 up 6, and then it says the midpoint is 4, 4, so 2, 4, 2, 4. What's going to happen is we know by looking at this that since A, B is the segment, B has to occur somewhere over here. And it's true that B has to occur so that the distance between M and B and A and M are the same. So what I need to do is I need to figure out that distance. So to go from A to M, I had to go down 2 and then over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So what that means is I have to do the same thing from M to get to B. So I'm going to go down 2. Then I'm going to go over 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So you just have to go off the graph here. And that'll be B. So the coordinates of B would actually be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, comma 2. So we went down 2 over 6. So now let's look at how we could do that algebraically. So basically, if you start with A, and we have negative 2, 6. We start with m, which is 4, 4. 
and we are trying to figure out B, if we line it up vertically, it kind of helps us visually see, okay, well, M is in the middle, A and B are the endpoints, and what we have to ask ourselves is how did we go from this X value to the midpoint? So how did I move horizontally? So from negative 2 to 4, we had to add 6. So write 6 is like adding 6 to X's, and then you do the same thing to this one, so we get 10. And then we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it to the y's. So how did I go from 6 to 4? Well, I subtracted 2. So that means I moved down 2. And then we repeat that process, so 4 minus 2 gives me 2. So you get the same answer, again, just a different way of doing it. And then the last thing that you need to look at is the distance or length of a segment. So how do you figure out how long a segment is given the coordinates? is the same thing as finding the distance between those two points. So for this, we use the distance formula. So d equals the square root of the change in x's squared plus the change in y's squared. And remember that the distance formula comes from the Pythagorean theorem. So really, this is like my a squared plus b squared equals d squared, but we took the square root of d so that we could get d by itself. So then this example here, we're given a segment and we have the two coordinates of the segment and we want to find the length. So as soon as you see find the length, that means I'm using the distance formula. And since I'm finding the distance between points P and Q, I'm going to write it as the distance of um, segment PQ or the length of segment PQ. So I'm going to put that as a subscript just because it's a good habit to get into especially when you're dealing with multiple distances in those coordinate proofs. So then I'm going to go up here and I'm just going to label these. You don't have to label these, it's just if it helps you. And then I'm going to go ahead and plug in. So it's my x's that I'm going to subtract. So I have negative 2 minus 2. And then I'm going to subtract the y's. So I have negative 6 minus negative 1. Make sure you keep both uh, minus signs there. And then I'm just going to simplify this. So I have negative 4 in parentheses. Notice I'm keeping those parentheses. I'm just working inside of the parentheses first. Keeping the parentheses working inside of those. So negative 6 minus negative 1 is negative 5. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to simplify these. So I have 16 and I have 25. Now notice I got rid of the negatives because I'm squaring a negative. A negative times a negative is positive. At this stage here, you should never have negative numbers because you've squared your numbers. So if you ever have negatives here, that means you need to go back and check. So then I just combined this stuff and I'm going to leave it as a square root. So 16 plus 25 gives me 41. And then you're just going to leave it like that and we're done.